ஐ ஆம் பியூஷ் கேபி அசிஸ்டன்ட் ப்ரொஃபசர் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் எலக்ட்ரானிக்ஸ் அண்ட் கம்யூனிகேஷன் இன்ஜினியரிங் அமிர்தா ஸ்கூல் ஆஃப் இன்ஜினியரிங் கோயம்புத்தூர் டுடே வி ஆர் ஸ்டார்டிங் வித் அவர் ஃபஸ்ட் லெக்சர் ஆன் எல்பிசி டூ ஒன் ஃபோர் எயிட் கோல்ஸ் பிஃபோர் கோயிங் இன் டு டீட்டெயில்ஸ் ஆஃப் த எல்பிசி டூ ஒன் ஃபோர் எயிட் கோல்ஸ் வி வுட் லைக் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் த பேசிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் எம்பர்ட் சிஸ்டம்ஸ் ரைட் ஸோ வீல் மூவ் ஆன் டு தட் ஸோ வாட் யூ மீன் பை அன் எம்பர்ட் சிஸ்டம் இட் இஸ் நத்திங் பட் அ சிஸ்டம் இன் விச் யூ ஆர் எம்பர்டிங் எ ஃபேம்பர் தட் மீன்ஸ் எ சாஃப்ட்வேர் இஸ் எம்பர்டட் இன் டு எ சிஸ்டம் தட் ஹோல் சிஸ்டம் யூ வில் கால் இட் ஆஸ் எ எம்பர்டட் சிஸ்டம் ஸோ எம்பர்டட் சிஸ்டம் இஸ் நத்திங் பட் எ ஹார்ட்வேர் ப்ளஸ் எ சாஃப்ட்வேர் ஸோ எம்பர்ட் சிஸ்டம் வில் பி ஹேவிங் டூ பார்ட்ஸ் ஹார்ட்வேர் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் சாஃப்ட்வேர் so these are the examples of embedded systems in your day to day life almost all the places embedded systems play a major role for example in the case of avionics or in the case of communication equipments or in the case of automobiles in all these cases you can see embedded system will be playing a major role in the consumer electronics office equipments household equipments etc also you can see those embedded systems whatever you are thinking in your day to day life it can be classified as a kind of embedded systems whether it is your washing machine or tv or whatever it is it is coming under the category of embedded system so nowadays almost all the category of uh, devices what you are seeing in your day to day life is coming in this category known as embedded systems so if you are writing a formal definition for an embedded system it is a system in which a software is embedded into a hardware that is a formal definition you can give there are several other definitions also but i would like to use this definition so what will be the core part of that system the core part will be a programmable device and that programmable device can be either microprocessor microcontroller or fpga or whatever it is that we will see later so nowadays automotive field or automotive domain plays a major role in the case of embedded devices nowadays in most of the car there are more than one processor uh, uh, generally there will be more than 80 processors in some high end cars and each and it will be of different types of uh, micro processors and microcontrollers will be there they will be classified based on the functionality say basic microcontrollers will be used for controlling say power window or say uh, lighting system etc and more and more complex systems such as, such as say uh, 32 bit or 16 bit microprocessors will be used for controlling say engine you will be having something known as engine management unit or engine control unit they will be playing a major role in controlling your automobile so for such application you will be using some higher end microprocessors for the other application you will be using lower grade microprocessors or microcontrollers so in a in a particular car or an automobile there will be different kinds of embedded systems fixed into that so let us take what let us uh, see what are the basic operations done by an embedded system so these are the basic three operation whatever embedded system you are taking only three operations will be done first operation will be sensing second operation will be processing last operation will be actuating whatever embedded device you are taking whatever operations they are doing it can be classified into these three categories so let us take a typical example of a temperature controller so if you are drawing a block diagram for a temperature controller what will be that it will be something like this so what does a temperature controller do it is nothing but it will control the temperature of a room how will you control the temperature of a room before controlling it needs to detect the present temperature then only it can control so how it will sense or detect the present temperature that operation is known as sensing operation for that you will be using any kind of temperature sensor right then that temperature value sensed value should be processed because how it is processed if the temperature value is above certain threshold you need to bring down the temperature if the temperature is below certain threshold you need to bring up the temperature so 
you are maintaining a temperature within a limit that is known as a temperature controller so where will be this processing done it will be done on a processing device for my example i have taken microprocessor as a processing device why i am taking microprocessor means i need to clarify what is the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller so for now time being i am taking a microprocessor so whatever sensed value you are sensing from the temperature sensor will be sent to a microprocessor in my case and the processed output will be sent to a actuator actuator what does it do actuator is a device which will perform some actions so in my case actuator is nothing but it is going to control a fan or an ac or a heater so when the temperature is above certain threshold it will switch on a fan or a ac and when the temperature is coming below certain threshold it will switch on a heater so by controlling the cooler or ac and the heater you are maintaining a temperature within a certain limit right so that controlling the heater or a cooler that process is known as a actuation or actuation actuating that will be done by using an actuator what are the actuators i am using heater or an ac or a fan these are the actuators so only three operations will be done present temperature will be sensed using a temperature sensor sensed temperature value will be processed in a microprocessor and after processing the final decision will be sent to an actuator such as fan or heater etc so these are the three main operations then why you are using the intermediate blocks say for example you are using a basic temperature sensor say lm35 the output of the temperature sensor lm35 will be analog in nature right but your microprocessor what you are using is nothing but a complex digital device so how will you send an analog signal to a digital device it is not possible so somehow you need to convert the analog value into digital data for that you are using something known as adc analog to digital converter so whatever sends the temperature value which is in analog format will be converted to digital and will be sent to a microprocessor which is a digital device and the processing will be done there finally the microprocessor should control the actuator say for example your ceiling ceiling fan it is operating on say 230 volt ac and it will let us take it will take less than 1 amps current but your microprocessor cannot supply that much amount of current typically a microprocessor will be able to say supply say, around in say microamps say 20 microamps 80 85 can supply only say around 20 microamps current but your fan requires less than say around 1 amps right so how will you control the fan you cannot directly control you need to have a kind of circuit known as driver what does the driver do with a low current signal or a low current uh, voltage you are going to control a high current device that is known as a driver this driver can be either an amplifier or a switching device such as relay uh, then conductor etc right so microprocessor will control the actuator with the help of a driver so these are the five blocks present in a temperature controller embedded systems so whatever embedded device you are taking it will it can you can draw a block diagram like this so in my present example i am using microprocessor as a processing device so let us take if i am replacing microprocessor with a microcontroller what modification i need to make in this block diagram right that is what you are going to see in the next slide so here i am replacing microprocessor with a microcontroller so what replacement i have done i was able to remove one block from this that is a adc block why because nowadays most of the microcontrollers are having inbuilt adc in the controller itself right so what is a microcontroller it can do it is a processing device along with the processor it is having some additional peripherals such as adc timer etc so if you are using a microprocessor you need to attach, attach an external adc chip but if you are using a microcontroller you don't need that external peripheral because it is already present inside the microcontroller so that is the difference between microcontroller and a microprocessor so microprocessor is generally used for processing application 
but it will be having less peripheral support microcontroller is used for controlling application so it will be having more internal peripherals so that is what i am i have written here so microprocessor it requires more external hardware support such as adc ram rom etc but so it is used for only processing kind of application but microcontroller it is used for controlling application so it requires only very little external support because most of the peripherals such as ram rom adc timer etc are present inside the controller itself right so there in the market you are have, there are several kinds of microcontrollers available so why you are going for a embedded systems these are some of the reasons you can reduce the number of components say for example if you want to design a temperature controller using a normal say digital or analog circuit it will take a it will uh, you need to use so many op amps and digital ic's but here your hardware remains the same only a microcontroller sensor and actuator will be there only the software you need to change so the number of components used in your circuit can be reduced so when you are reducing the number of components size also will be reduced when you are reducing the size cost also will be reducing to a certain limit then power consumption also will be reduced because each component will be taking a uh, little amount of current so if you are able to reduce that power consumption also will be reduced and easier upgradation and troubleshooting that means if you are having less number of components it will be easy for you to troubleshoot and maintain otherwise so much of amount so much of time you need to spend on that to find out where the uh, fault is and this embedded devices will be used for specific controlling applications so this is what i have told what do you mean by microcontroller so microcontroller is nothing but it is having a cpu or a processing unit along with other peripherals integrated into a single chip so that is a microcontroller so generally microcontroller will be a most important part in a uh, say uh, embedded system so these are some of the various kinds of microcontrollers available generally the microcontrollers are divided or classified based on how many bit data it can handle so there are 8 bit microcontrollers 16 bit microcontrollers 32 bit microcontrollers etc so now we will be dealing with lpc2148 it is coming under the category known as 32 bit microcontroller then next we will deal with two different categories of architectures available in a embedded system whatever embedded devices you are going to design you will uh, you will uh, say you will be dealing with these two type of architectures generally so it is known, one is known as harvard architecture other one is known as john von neumann architecture so what do you mean by harvard architecture in the harvard architecture you will be having a cpu and a separate data and a separate program memory will be there in the case of harvard architecture so what will be the advantage from the cpu data can be sent through a bus directly to the data memory that bus is known as that bus is known as the data bus and through another bus you can send it to the program memory that is known as program bus right so in a particular time you or in a uh, say uh, in the same time you can send the data as well as program to and fro from the cpu that is the advantage but if you are using john von neumann architecture you will be having only one bus bus means it is a path through which you are interacting with the memory and the cpu right and if it is written uh, if it is written one dash and eight what does it mean the size of the data bus size of that bus will be eight bit that means 8 bit information can be transmitted so in the case of john von neumann architecture only one bus will be there for sending program as well as data right because whatever embedded system you are uh, programming you need to write a program and that program will be 
use for manipulating some data right say for example you are writing a program for addition of two numbers so those two numbers are the data and the program will be your program so both the program and data should be sent to the CPU or, uh, or uh, the uh, operations that has to be done on the CPU both the program and data are required so if you are going to send the data and program simultaneously to the CPU you should use Harvard architecture otherwise you should go for John von Neumann architecture nowadays most of the controllers are coming under Harvard architecture then another category of uh, process are known as RISC and CISC RISC means what? Reduced Instruction Set Computer CISC means Complex Instruction Set Computer so Reduced Instruction Set Computer from the name itself you will get some idea that very less number of instructions will be there but those instructions are capable of doing more operations in a single cycle right so in the reduced instruction set computer one operation will be generally single cycle operation right in the case of complex instruction set computer each instruction will be taking multiple number of cycles that is one of the important problem there so that is the difference between risk and CISC main difference is less number of instructions in the other side more number of instructions will be there so here you need to uh, most of the instructions are single cycle instructions in the complex instruction set most of the instructions are multi cycle instructions so these are the difference between CISC and RISC so our LPC2148 microcontroller comes under RISC category that is why I have uh, uh, discuss the difference between one more difference is that it will be having less than say in the case of risk it will be having less than 50 uh, instructions here more than 100 instruction will be there it is only a thumb rule it depends upon which microprocessor or microcontroller you are using so by this we will end the uh, basics of embedded systems next we will be going to the introduction of ARM